everyone um, to this uh, lecture series. We call it the Nyana lecture series. And uh, so we basically bring people who have uh, experience in this space of uh, yoga and Ayurveda uh, every week to share their experience and knowledge on this uh, science of well being. And today we have um, a very interesting uh, speaker who just does not bring Ayurveda, but Ayurveda and yoga, but brings in uh, elements from modern science, uh, from psychology, and lots of other uh, spaces to really uh, make the whole description very rich. So, uh, Mr. Jayachandran, he is uh, a graduate in natural therapeutics and yoga from uh, Mangalore University in Karnataka. And he's worked in organizations like Hayat, uh, Jindal, uh, Vivekananda, Yoga University, um, and quite a lot, a lot of other organizations. Um, uh, and now he's a wellness consul uh, consultant um, based out of Goa and Kerala. And I, I'm not sure if I, I, I'm sure there's a lot more to cover about Jai Chandran, but I think with this brief introduction, I've probably touched the salient uh, points that I had to touch upon. And uh, maybe you can uh, give us a little bit of insight into how you, on your own personal journey and what got in, you into yoga and Ayurveda. Sure, 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 sure. Thank you. Thank you, Arjun. That was um, quite a lot, I think. <laughs> Because see, it's 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 sometimes it's very important that um, uh, you know we stick onto the subject uh, than uh, you know the whole thing around it. So anyway, uh, it's good to know a little bit uh, and then tell about myself uh, in the sense uh, what I represent, not me as a person, but what I represent. That's that's much more ideal, I think. So I'm originally from Kerala. Uh, I'm uh, from the middle part of Kerala. This uh, place is quite famous for the rubber plantations. It, in fact, it's one of the best rubber producing uh, you know, areas in the world. Uh, so my family basically is into Ayurveda. Uh, Arjun, am, am I audible enough? Yes, sir. Sure, okay. So my, my family basically is into Ayurveda uh, and uh, other medical field. My grandfather uh, was an Ayurveda practitioner. So we started a center in uh, Kerala in about 1928. Uh, which is a non-commercialized center, uh, which is still being run by my father's brothers and all that. Except my father, everybody was into the medical field, uh, either into the traditional Ayurvedic, uh, you know, kind of uh, healthcare or into modern medicine. So after my, uh, of course, so because of that, you know, we all get to understand about Ayurveda more from a lifestyle point of view rather than from a schooling point of view. That means, you know, we get to see, hear about Ayurveda, understand Ayurveda from a, as if it is something day to day happening. You know, we don't have to think about Ayurveda because we were living Ayurveda in a way. Uh, from that, uh, when I reached uh, my uh, schooling, when I completed my schooling, uh, of course, naturally, somehow the medicine, maybe the, the genetic part, it may be the genetic propulsion must have, you know, pushed into it. So I wanted to get into the medical field and somehow maybe because of the cultural background, I was much more uh, interested into the traditional field than the modern field. So in fact, of course, I, I did not go in actually for the modern uh, option for the modern medicine as well. So then uh, there was a choice between Ayurveda and then, of course, a naturopathy. Naturopathy was very similar to Ayurveda. Uh, it's again a five and a half year degree um, uh, after your science plus two background. So I went and did that. And then post that, I came back to my own uh, you know, family center and then I was helping uh, with, around my family members and all that. And then, you know, naturally, you want to explain. So I moved out of my uh, kind of all that I moved out to uh, some centers in Jindal. Jindal is quite a famous one in Bangalore. Uh, so from there, I moved to uh, from hospital background. I moved to a hospitality. I was working for a uh, international uh, sort company by the name Hyatt. Hyatt International. It's an American, uh, you know, hotel chain basically. So uh, that was the time when the hotels were uh, looking at, uh, you know, repositioning themselves as, um, you know, lifestyle centers rather than just. Uh, you know, serving food and uh, bed. So I got introduced to the spa part of the hotel, which is the lifestyle part. So I started there and uh, I worked with Hyatt for about 10 plus years. 
uh, I worked uh, in different positions from a spa physician to administration and then as the spa director, then went into the project stage, you know, opening up and setting up centers and everything. So I worked in a few centers outside India as well in Hong Kong, China and all that. Then I came back and then, you know, sometimes this hospitality actually takes a lot of your um, you know, energy. It, it actually gets into your system. So when the hospitality started eating me up, I thought, you know, it's time for me to move out. So I moved out of the hospitality and then I went back into doing projects, different types of wellness centers. So I was establishing, um, uh, you know, kind of integrated wellness centers using uh, Ayurveda, naturopathy, yoga, physiotherapy, acupuncture. You know, multiple modalities all brought under one uh, umbrella. Uh, that was what I was doing. Of course, in between, again, I helped a few centers in Sri Lanka. I went to another resort uh, to help them out to bring up some, uh, let's say, life size, uh, you know, programs and all that. Uh, but currently now, due to the specific, um, uh, you know, the conditions around with uh, Corona and all that. So I'm back in my hometown, that's Kerala. So that's how uh, I came in touch with uh, Arjun and then Arjun said that, you know, quite a lot of people are interested in Ayurveda suddenly. Well, it's not a sudden interest, of course, I understand that. Uh, it's all a part of the, uh, the universal changes what is happening. You know, when things go too fast ahead, we start thinking of the past. So that's what happens in life also. So I believe that's the reason why nowadays there is a surge in, uh, you know, people looking for everything traditional, ancient and everything. And uh, interestingly, Arjun wanted to have a topic, something related to ancient practices, uh, you know, uh, or integrated practices of uh, modern lifestyle. So I said, fine, that sounds quite good. And then that's how we are here right now here. So, so quite an interesting journey. Um, and since you brought this up about the ancient practices for, uh, for the modern lifestyle, um, yeah. what's your what's your take uh, on this particular topic because lots of people you know um, sometimes feel like ancient is you know for the past and now there is modern medicine uh, right. for the for the present so why why even go to something that's ancient so that's no, no, that's, that's really interesting. That's, in fact, you know, that was something which I wanted to touch upon, uh, you know, somewhere in between our discussions and talk. That's what, you know, even when we, we were uh, discussing about it, I said that, you know, it should not be just a monologue talk system rather than it should be an interactive system. Because see, when you are interacting, uh, things uh, which are more interesting will come up rather than just a talk. So this is exactly how the talk I had in my mind that we should start with understanding what it is. The idea is that this will not be an informative talk. This should be more of an educative talk. That means the person should be able to think about it. So it's very important that uh, what kind of terminology is what we use. And so rightly, as you asked, now what ancient has to do with modern? Now the word ancient actually means before the senses. That's a real etymological meaning of the word ancient that means you stand as a person who is before the census you know the census gives you information so who is assessing and who is um, you know processing this information that is what is called as ancient so if you are standing to process the information what comes into you you are ancient so ancient does not actually mean old man, you know, who passed away some hundred years before or, you know, centuries before. That has no such meaning at all. They are called as ancestors. They are not ancestors. Ancestor and ancient are very different. So being ancient means being intelligent or being into the intelligence is what the actual word ancient means. So it is the most relevant word applicable even in modern lifestyle because modern means now. Modern means actually measuring, you know, the measuring means, you know, you should do it right now. Now is the meaning of the word modern. Okay. So ancient, in, ancient means intelligence and now is whatever is happening right. So that way I think it is quite uh, connecting and integration means to, to sum up or to mix up all these things. Okay. It's not just mixing up in a judicious manner. You mix up everything in an intelligent manner, in a rational manner, when you mix up all these things, then it becomes integrated. So in, in every way, I think ancient integrated practices for modern lifestyle is a very, very apt, um, uh, you know, subject name to be uh, thought of. True. I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm uh, quite, uh, uh, true, is, true. It, is it being, 
Is it so, okay? Yeah. Okay. No, no, sure, sure, sure. That is uh, that, that's actually a very interesting point of view. But what's your take on the on the idea that you know when when someone says that the modern science basically has an approach to um, diagnosis and uh, and it's really uh, evidence based, whereas certain ancient practices which are a uh, little bit say psychosomatic in nature don't really have um, they're not based on uh, proofs and when somebody uh, comes up with this thing that you know said these practices probably don't really have any uh, proofs how do they match up to what's happening in the current um, day what good no that's 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 fair it's a very very fair question it is very relevant so before addressing that let's let's get a little bit on the background part so that you know it becomes a little more clear uh, so what we are talking about is about health right yeah. so uh, it's very important for us to understand what health is in a in a simple manner and then we need to understand what are the measures available for us to deal with this thing called as health and then how does it differ and what suits you the best so this is the way how we will uh, go into the that part of your question so health primarily you know you you have a lot of definitions you go to google you will find a lot of definitions uh, even who has defined health as a balance between you know different dimensions like uh, you know physical mental social and xyz but these definitions they are very bland uh, they are very bland in the sense they are very ambiguous kind of definitions because you know it says that it's a balance now uh, what do you do with the balance it doesn't tell you anything so uh, you 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 want to achieve something uh, for which you do not know what you are going to use with that so that lacks something so this is one of the reason why this health becomes such a uh, you know problematic ambiguous kind of uh, thing which everyone start talking about any x y z we talk about everybody has their own views and all that which is fine which is good but then once you put a clear cut definition a definition always carries an objective so the moment you put an objective to your health definition things becomes very clear automatically there's nothing uh, deviation from that so uh, to to review the health definition you can think of health in three terminologies one thing is awareness second thing is action third one is actor so awareness means uh, you know it is it is something like it's it's kind of you are defining who you are the moment you define who you are you are defining your immunity that means you are defining who you are and what is good for you and what is not good for you you have developed a, a perfect immune system there okay i'm not just talking physiological immune system even psychophysiological in every way every way immune system so immune system basically tells you gives you an identity okay so this identity development is the first part of health so you should have an objective that is the one which gives you this identity so without that you cannot talk of health what will happen is that without that if you start talking of health you will start saying that you know um, uh, something some vegetable vegetarian is very good some people will say non vegetarian is good some people will say you know honey is bad somebody can say that, you know other thing is good it becomes too much of uh, discussions without any objective so the moment you define that who you are okay i am so and so person and this is then this is going to be your health that's called as awareness that means you are not just going to wear whatever comes in the market you will wear according to what is your decision this is called as awareness so bring in the definition of who you are which is called as awareness that's the first part of uh, you know health second part of health if you want to understand that is action action is of course the physiology what happens inside your body you know there are that's a society inside your body you know different types of organs they have their own functional uh, uh, you know specialities their own requirements so integrate all these various things in the internal society into a single unit that's that's called the physiological part of the health so whatever be your objective according to that you will integrate your physiology that's the second part called as action okay now the third one is the actor actor means the person of course the matter part the body part the structural part so what is needed for the body structure maintenance and um, uh, you know the input the food part the cognition part that is basically the actor so you have three things input internal and output 
input is the actor the body care part whatever you take into the body okay internal is your physiology how do you integrate the different functions of various organs and third one is your awareness that is your immunity or your identity so everything goes for the identity so that's how you define the health once you define it this way then a number of things automatically becomes clear to give you a simple example if you want to be an athlete there is a particular way of identity that you need to develop there is a particular physiology that you need to develop and there are certain particular food and cognition and practices which you need to uh, follow that will define your health now this may not be the right one for a sumo wrestler sumo wrestler is a completely different personality so he will have his own now similarly you can define it for a person of you know let's say 70 year old you know generally his health and his requirements and his identity will be completely different from a 6 year old so what happens is that you are not going for an objective definition you are being very clear you are being very specific and you are being very subjective based on who you are what you want and what you want to achieve in your life you define uh, your health and accordingly the nature will get defined there is no objective definition given to the nature so this is how uh, in in small understanding of uh, health now coming to the modern medicine differences between modern medicine traditional medicine and even now imagine that um, you know the, there are three ways of treating a condition one is instinctive okay immediate like you know imagine that you are in a forest you don't have anything available okay you will you will start treating or you will start taking care of your health according to your instincts and this is something like you know natural care absolute raw natural care there is nothing to find about it okay this is also good there are many incidents where you need this for example you know you you got frightened by something you may need to run away from that place this is instinctive health care because it's going to save your life or you know you you saw something and you immediately want to make that as your food so you need to have all those reflexes to catch that and eat it or you know to climb up and you know, bring it down and eat it this is all instinctive taking care this is absolute natural you can call that genetic second thing is emotional now emotionally is more like ayurveda you know it is not exactly a forest kind of a uh, you know care it's little more refined you can imagine like a garden or you know kind of a defined forest uh, you know where things are much more defined you know much more better uh, that kind of a natural care is uh, ayurveda siddha and all these you know traditional chinese medicine and all these kind of one modern medicine is intellectual intellectual means like an army action you have a very specific defined objective you will do only that nothing else is a consideration this is the very very simple way of non technical understanding of the these these three things these three things are very very important because you need to have your instinctive health care you need to have your emotion type of health care you need to have of course the intellectual type of health care also to give you a simple example uh, let's say that uh, the traditional healthcare are more like policemen whereas the modern medicine is more like an army so if you have a thief in your society you cannot you can of course call the police i mean the army no doubt all the thieves will vanish within one 24 hours every thief will vanish from the system this is uh, possible and that's a very easy system no doubt okay but ideally what we do is that we use a policeman because our aim is not to eliminate or terminate the thief our aim is to you know change, bring him into the constitution bringing him into the constitution means bring him into your systems internal system is the constitution of the society so they have their own rules and regulations so you bring this thief into that system and the system knows what to do so the system will actually kind of a, uh, you know send him into jail or something so that you know he will get refined and reformed that's a actual idea so that we can bring him back into the society so this is one fundamental understanding of the traditional system difference from the modern system whereas modern system is more like an army personnel they have fixed objective you go there finish off the work and sanitize the entire area there is no bringing back anybody to society or anything you finish terminate it that's very important for emergency no doubt but you cannot have army coming in to solve your civilian issues then the country will go into pieces so this is how you need to understand and objectively evaluate uh, various treatment modalities and you should see what is the best suiting for you accordingly you should select each system there is no point in saying that you know this system is good or that system is bad uh, that does not work anyway
it's not going to work emergencies you have to treat as emergency when it is um, uh, you know emotional care you have to go in that way so that's how i think uh, one should be able to use their uh, intellect remember we said that ancient ancient means standing before the information analyze the information use your intellect that's how you are ancient and that's how you become relevant in modern that is now so modern medicine also actually is quite um, uh, you know useful that way. we cannot reject anything uh, this is what even most of the ancient philosophies and everything teaches you don't be a neanderthal in your society be what is relevant to the society and act according to that that's the fundamental philosophy of every traditional uh, system anywhere in the world i hope i was able to touch your points true true i mean very interesting uh, example as well uh, mm-hmm. the whole army and policemen only <laughs> example as well when you touch upon that so um, yeah. but but there's a catch to this right like so um, for example some systems like the ancient system when you said they have to also um, somehow match with the modern time right i mean they have to also evolve in some ways to the modern time um when you look at um, ayurveda i'm being a devil's advocate here when you mm-hmm. when you formulate medicine it is still based mm-hmm. on um, say the texts of vagbhata or charaka and they are mm-hmm. taken as you know they are taken as um, if it's written there then it has to be accepted although the times then were different than what times are right now so mm-hmm. in some ways the evolution of uh, an ancient system has stopped although the other system which is say the modern system um modern as in it's always evolving with time is changing mm-hmm. based on the evidence that's happening right now so yeah. um so how do you uh, compare it that way there is uh, something there. okay but, okay I, i i understand from where you are coming now let me put you another perspective to it now everything is everything okay now there is we should not go objectively as old and ancient modern and all that stuff everything is the same thing because you know even if you look at the evolution theory we all are the same people who evolved from the same species in one way okay there are new latest studies which says that you know that theory may not be exactly perfect because there are possibilities of artificial uh, mutations being done in human genes there are interesting studies happening but anyway second to that what i meant was that see a change happens to what is existing irrespective of whether it was old or new okay so the changes what you see in the modern medicine actually if you see the modern medicine is actually incorporating all the traditional changes if you see maximum studies are being done in microbiome microbiome is um, you know the internal microbes that lives in your intestines and everything okay not only intestines it's actually all over the body in fact we are not there this belongs to the uh, microbes actually there are trillions and trillions of uh, microbes living in our body which is which is i, I don't know some some calculation say it is more than 10 times or 15 times more than your own human cells so we are actually nothing but a group of microbes so a lot of studies are being happening in this micro uh, you know biome and interestingly this microbiome is nothing but the holistic philosophy what ancients used to speak about in ayurveda like in you know, vata pitta kapha and all that so it matches a lot with that now of course the language what was used in those days might be very different than the what language what we are using right now and there is nothing wrong in that that does not mean that olden days were not scientific in fact if you look at it the olden days uh, were extremely scientific because they they just made only guidelines in most of the textbooks and then what they asked was that they asked the physicians to go and formulate it making changes according to your geography and your type of um, you know people and basing on their conditions so it was supposed to be very very dynamic a system they can follow the basic um, you know guideline which is given in the textbooks but then they were supposed to make changes so this way they used to make it very lively another thing second thing was this was completely decentralized system so when you say decentralized only uh, the basic guideline was given for example you know what is relevant in north part of india ayurveda will never be relevant in south part of india you may have to make changes according to the weather and according to the person's food according to the cultural uh, changes epigenetic changes basically so this was there always now um, 
of course, I agree that in between, there was a period when all these things were not happening. A lot of studies which should have happened did not happen. Uh, well, we can debate on that the reasons why it did not happen and all that, but that's not important and relevant for the topic of discussion right now. So coming into comparison with uh, the modern medicine, yes, of course, the modern medicine is actually doing a research in a lot of ancient, uh, uh, you know, philosophies there is no doubt so the healthcare system what they are talking about you know the uh, the preventive part there are a lot of prebiotics coming into the market there are a lot of uh, nutrition and dietetics based research is happening there are centers all over the world uh, where they practice uh, you know fasting kind of um, uh, ancient techniques and they are doing a lot of uh, fantastic studies on that tcm is one of the most accepted um, uh, what do you call uh, treatment modality uh, all over the world there are people i'm from kerala so i know that there are a lot of people who come down from different countries european countries and all that for specific ayurvedic treatment so it is equally being accepted even modern science is also accepting the ayurveda part uh, though there are certain difficulties you talked about one interesting word called as evidence based now you see people fall for these kind of uh, terminologies because they think that is something very great in fact evidence based also means evidence limited that's a very very interesting part which is covered when you say something is evidence based and it has a proof proof does not mean the end proof only means probability you can probe into it again and again and again that's what the meaning of the word proof and thus what was the um, evidence based you know actually becomes evidence limited for example let's say that you found something with the research so what you are supposed to say is that okay with the research we found out this is the result but it does not mean that is the end of it you, you, you understood what i am coming from the difference so evidence based need not be uh, you know presented as evidence limited so this is one, of course, this is a commercialization part of it. It's not the part of the science, in fact. So the commerce part of people actually comes in with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, what do you call that, jargons, saying that evidence-based and the other thing is not evidence-based. It has nothing to do with the science. Absolutely nothing to do with the science. Science means observation. Science means measurement. And what you measure and what you observe, you just state as it is. It doesn't have any emotions attached to it. But the moment when we start saying that it is evidence-based, you know, you, you have some uh, investment behind that. That's the reason you bring up such kind, not you in the sense, you as a person, Arjun, I mean, uh, you know, generally the, uh, the world. So this is to be understood, uh, but then that that's again part of the world. You can't uh, run away from that. So uh, yes, there are differences. Uh, there are issues because of that. And I am, in fact, I will tell you one more problem, which actually we are going to face uh, in traditional medicine, which you have not mentioned, is that most of the things are changing in the traditional medicine. For example, um, let's say, take as a very simple example, the, the, let's say, let's say food, food, what we used to eat, let's, let's take, for example, wheat, you know, since many, many centuries and generations, people were eating meat, I mean, sorry, wheat, there was no problem. But suddenly people started developing uh, celiac diseases, irritable bowel syndrome, gluten allergies and all these kind of things. Why, why did they develop? It's because we have introduced a lot of uh, bread uh, wheat uh, germs into the uh, system. That means uh, modified wheat germs, you know, commercially bred uh, wheat. Now, this does not match the software of your system. Software of the system means your physiology. Since generate load, it doesn't match. So it doesn't suit your microbiome. So you start developing immune-related allergy conditions. So your immunity actually starts rejecting it. And then people start developing inflammatory bowel diseases, irritable bowel diseases, celiac diseases, gluten allergies, all these kind of stuff. So these kind of things are very important for Ayurveda type of people to understand because the, the, the nature is changing. So you need to understand, you, have, you need to review the nature from a modern point of view. As you rightly said, you need to do a lot of research into the understandings of traditional textbooks. They have said very great things, but that was relevant to those times. You have to make it relevant again. So you have to review it again, recollect everything, you review it and re reimagine everything. That's how you make it modern. I think this is very important, very relevant. So very, uh, a lot of studies are happening, but as you rightly said, it's not enough. I, I completely agree on that. It's not enough. Coming back to the, the current lifestyle, what, what is it that, what are the um, takeaways that we can take from, uh, from what Ayurveda has uh, suggested in 
the text about say modern lifestyle diseases uh, that are you know caused due to uh, our slightly sedentary lifestyle i would say i mean i don't think um, humans are are actually designed to sit on chairs for you know 7 to 8 hours a day every day and be looking at a screen um, probably that's not uh, at least our closest ancestors are doing which are chimpanzees and bonobos uh, so what is it uh, that you know uh, what kind of impact does the modern lifestyle have on our on our physical and mental being and how what does ayurveda have to say about it uh, in terms okay. of the solutions um yeah that that that's that's a very good question now uh, see there are certain things which you need to understand one thing is uh, emergency conditions okay so we will not touch the emergency conditions because they are emergency they are accidental okay in a very large uh, philosophical and uh, theoretical sense it may be very relevant also but then we will not touch it for the sake of uh, keeping this discussion limited to a certain area okay so we will not be touching emergencies in any way like accidents and fractures and all these kind of things okay so coming back to the non emergency uh, conditions uh, is where we will be uh, fixing up the discussion now in 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 that as i told you previously the definition of health goes according to what is your identity and what do you want to do with that so uh, normally you know people have an understanding uh, called as ease and disease this is a simple understanding of disease and ease because you compare uh, when you are at ease you say you are healthy when you are dislocated from the ease you call yourself as disease now this ease is again an ambiguous term what is ease for you may not be ease for me right and um, you know it 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 doesn't actually uh, exclude any conditions for example a person can have diabetes or a person can have heart disease a person can have maybe x y z problems but that does not qualify to um, uh, you know impose a definition of him as diseased you cannot do that because he may have this condition but still he is at ease as long as he is able to achieve his objective so he is a healthy person now uh, uh, what happens is that the disease more for the psychological in that way okay if you think that you know you have a problem and you want to address all these things only then of course you are at disease you are dislocated from the ease but if you think that okay i have all these problems i have all these conditions but still i am doing my best with the all available options and i am still working ahead to achieve my goals or my objectives then i am a person at ease and i am happy so this is fundamental which we need to understand about diseases but the moment you know you put name on to something you know naming is one of the uh, what do you call uh, industry tactics to uh, bring in a commerce into it okay because the moment you name something on a already you know you know it and then you get manipulated okay this is exactly what is happening a lot into the uh, what do you call current world uh, current world the the science has been hijacked by commerce okay a lot of uh, pure pure science has got hijacked by commerce and then they are promoting it behind from the uh, science so a lot of time the real science suffers uh, people have got confused between what is real science and how the commerce is actually eating it up no no one understand common man will never understand that it's, it becomes very very difficult because these things are happening in a very insidious manner or you know what you you, you, you can think of advertisement you know advertisement is subliminal uh, what do you call influence it's actually converting you but in a subliminal manner okay that means you do not know that you are getting converted but you will get converted it's like in you know, a children how they children learn children don't learn by what you verbally tell them they actually mimic you they look at you and they understand non verbal communication they understand you from your feelings your actions and what you have not talked so this is exactly how human beings learn even adults also not only children that's how we fall for all the advertisements similarly the modern science has been hijacked and a lot of commercial activities are happening now coming into the disease part and ease part uh, the the traditional wisdom actually tells you to integrate yourself irrespective of your condition whether you are having x i mean disease or y disease or z disease doesn't matter you integrate yourself first you see what you can do with what you already have that is your body 
your physiology and your mind make sure that these things are being um, you know given a fantastic flow okay and then it becomes easy for you to carry the conditions that you may have there are certain genetic conditions familial conditions you cannot get rid of that 100% and of course remember i told you initially that our aim is not exactly termination or elimination in all the cases our aim is basically to carry what others are having and still make the person relevant and easy and happy in his life because you know you cannot go on terminating everything in the life but the the same thing what we did with the antibiotics we thought that you know bacteria are the worst in the world so let's terminate bacteria so we developed antibiotic but then we are suffering because of the antibiotics now in fact most of these diseases including many of the viral infections has origin uh, maybe from antibiotic resistance so it is very important for us to um, intelligently and judiciously understand these differences and apply the uh, available tools like science or traditional medicine and everything so i think uh, even in modern diseases you can always go with a combination the fundamental of any traditional medicine is to ensure that your lifestyle starting from waking up up to the next waking up time you create according to your objective that's very very important there is no single lifestyles uh, suitable and best for every human being there is no way possible every human being is genetically different every human being is socially different and every human being is psychologically different so accordingly you you uh, your objective is fixed and then you fix your system according to that remember i told you initially if you are an athlete you have a completely different lifestyle than a sumo wrestler you cannot compare and you cannot say that a sumo wrestler is going to have a bad diet or a bad lifestyle no he is a sumo wrestler so he needs to have all that so accordingly judiciously we need to use what we have all the resources and the science i think that's that's how it should be addressed interesting so uh, so did i cover the, what you asked me for the question yeah or is there did, anything pending no no you did cover is it that okay. uh, uh, is it that uh, if i had to be a little more specific um, if you you could you could ask me you could ask me yeah, so i do so not specifically specific. I, i would say that um, uh, yeah. um if we have to look at you know what are the common um, disorders or diseases that are being caused due to the modern lifestyle which is slightly sedentary in nature um mm-hmm. these ones um what what take does ayurveda have on these uh, certain diseases or disorders mm-hmm. and um since they they also look at the root cause because i mean it's these are lifestyle based diseases these are more preventive in nature than curative right so mm-hmm. does ayurveda has like certain um, ways of looking at them And sure sure okay okay i understood that yeah i, I got it now see uh, the, the the modern lifestyle as such primarily as you said uh, you know uh, the people are become sedentary now what has happened was that originally traditionally even uh, you know your ancestors sign people were walking on all four okay like mm-hmm. you were uh, you were a uh, animal kind of a thing so what happened the gravity was actually equally distributed in your spine okay mm-hmm. we started uh, you know walking on two uh, legs that means we became a kind of a, a vertical uh, personality so what happens your act and you you were gravity started falling immediately uh, on your lower back which is in the lumbosacral area because it's the lower back area to be uh, more easy to understand and then that's why of course you have all this gluteal muscle development and everything which are anti gravity muscles now what happens is that when you do this your your brain starts actually becoming a satellite uh see previously in the in the solar system if you look at it uh the sun was actually illuminating everything and so there was a moon i mean so there was a earth uh but then due to certain changes the satellite came around the uh, earth called as the moon similarly uh, we were in a particular positioning in the earth we were on all four where the gravity was equally distributed but when we changed and made the gravity to affect directly on our lower back uh your head part actually has gone above the gravity that means there is less influence of gravity on your head so that's how you developed your conscious brain or your cerebrum and everything it started projecting and you were able to think more so what has happened was that because of your brain development your thoughts starts becoming loosening up so that's how human being got the complete differentiation from uh, you know other uh, animals comparatively the the quality called as imagination imagination uh, is 
of course they say to a certain extent animals also can dream and all that but uh, they cannot imagine more than that so this imagination quality is what made us different but the 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 catch with the imagination is that it's like in the air you know it is like a wind or you know it just flies you away so if if you do not have enough matter in your system that means your body if it is not strong enough it cannot hold you to the ground so you lose the quality to be grounded okay so this is going to be one of the biggest problem what modern uh, people are facing because they are not grounded so they are just sitting on the ground but they are not grounded that means you have a body but then it's useless body so redundancy of the body is what is happening and because of that we developed a lot of metabolic diseases like you know obesity you know as you said correctly heart diseases uh, you know you call anything even uh, dementia related alzheimers all these things are related to uh, body only and the origin is also body uh, it's not necessarily mind a lot of things people think that is mind related but it's not actually mind there is no mind in fact there is no mind anywhere mind is nothing but every cell in your body that is nothing but your body when the body is in action that is called as mind there is no other mind in the body uh, and this is controlled by your microbiome that is the bacteria viruses and everything in your uh, you know intestine and there are certain nervous system related to all these things which controls all that so these kind of modern lifestyle diseases certainly has to be treated uh, cannot be treated actually with medicine alone that's the reason why modern medicine is failing in most of the non communicable diseases like diabetes obesity arthritis chronic pain age related conditions early degeneration even youngsters especially the ladies they are finding a lot of hormonal imbalances uh, basically because of all these lifestyle problems one of the most 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 important thing what ayurveda or traditional medicine or traditional health care can uh, teach modern medicine or modern health care is about sleep how to sleep the importance of sleep if you see thousands and thousands of studies are being published every month on sleep but still even that is very limited very limited they have not understood the actual part of the sleep so this could be one of the things for traditional care can uh, teach because if you sleep well actually you live well your sleep actually makes your future your today is because of your sleep yesterday night so this is so 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 much uh, what do you call related that sleep becomes more important than your daytime but you can sleep well only if you are awake well in the daytime so you can be awake well in the daytime only if you move your body so it could be in the form of exercises uh, whatever things you know see the traditional healthcare does not mean looking at certain ayurvedic products and medicines and all that that is all secondary or tertiary part of the ayurvedic healthcare ayurvedic healthcare starts from kitchen and the best kitchen what you know is your intestine so the healthcare actually starts from your intestine according to traditional ayurvedic system that's why in you know olden day if you see indian houses and all that the kitchen was like a icu people cannot enter there if you want to enter your kitchen you have to take bath you have to be like a you know as if you are going into a surgical theater if you are not taking bath you are not allowed to even stand outside the kitchen because the kitchen is where you create the fire and fire is with which you cook everything and cooked food is what is going to process you how you process in the kitchen the same way you will get processed inside your body with the food so the traditional healthcare actually starts from your intestines and then they go up so the food part is very important then uh, de- depending on the you know season weather conditions you have to change your food they introduced measures like fasting you know fasting does not mean not eating food fasting means basically you know having food uh, according to the season according to the weather changing the type of food maybe changing the duration of your uh, food Uh, the window of eating these are the measures what traditional uh, people advise which is being followed even now also when this does not help then only you will look at plant based um, uh, you know medicines when that also doesn't work then you look at metal based medicine and then of course you go in for surgery in fact surgery started in ayurveda uh, the the even the british uh, you know library of uh, medicine actually has a huge uh, you know write up about uh, the medicine what i mean surgery what was practiced in uh, india what happened to ayurvedic surgery was because of the buddha's death uh, buddha died in a uh, kind of a post surgical uh, thing even though he was 80 85 so at that time a lot of kings actually discouraged surgery and the kerala ayurveda especially was developed by a lot of buddhists so they devised specific treatments 
uh, which will bypass even the surgical uh, what do you call uh, measures that's how kerala ayurveda became very famous uh, all over the world with all these specific you know dharas and all those kind of treatment so coming back to the thing so these are the type of measures what what is going to help a lot even in um, you know modern lifestyle conditions that's basically you know these measures which will uh, help you to understand um, like fasting uh, you know how to uh, how to sleep well uh, and to sleep well how do you treat your body in the daytime so th- this is all a very much a lifestyle thing and i think it's very relevant that way interesting um now i'm also uh, going to leave it open for our listeners to ask uh, any questions i hope i'm audible um yeah now you are audible yeah okay so i uh, i'll just read the people said so um this is very interesting uh, discussion from like i initially said it's from different different areas and you saw how jay chandran basically integrated different topics uh, as he explained um how ayurveda impacts our daily health so uh, if anyone has a question since we are like a small group uh, you don't actually need to type it you could you could just um, put on your audio or video and ask the question i think yeah that's very good can i ask one arjun sure go for it uh, sure. na- uh, namaste sir thank you so much uh, for your wonderful talk you 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 are aparna right yeah yes yes sir i'm uh, i edit a magazine called soft power center for soft power i don't know if you heard anyway um, for soft power yes yes, yes I, have, yeah. i have i have i have very much have come across some of the articles in fact is this so, something uh, to do with uh, what you call subhashka and all that yes he is one of our friends those friends ah yeah yeah okay Suppose. okay okay good good but we yeah, are, yeah, yeah. yeah we are uh, you know uh, closely in touch with avp and dr nagendra and uh, sure uh, sure sure that's very good very good uh, yeah i wanted to ask you sir uh, we uh, just carried a story about uh, dr gangadhar's uh, latest book and uh, mm-hmm. there he mentions about uh, this ayurvedic herb called uh, sarpagandha i don't know if i've got it correct yeah. Sure, so sure, he says, right. you know, yeah, you have this uh, medicinal plant which in Ayurveda was used to treat uh, blood pressure, and the same herb was used uh, in modern times for allopathy again to treat blood pressure. In Ayurveda, there were absolutely mm-hmm. no um, side effects, whereas mm-hmm. in uh, when it was used uh, extracted in labs, it caused uh, depression and other side effects. the allopathy use of sarpagandha so how mm-hmm. how does Good. you know how did these uh, you know rishis how did they uh, extract these medicinal qualities without it having side effects and modern science Fantastic. is not able to use the plant in a, you know the same plant mm-hmm. is uh, is used to treat the same disease but in ayurveda oh, yeah, no, i'm sure this can be uh, juxtaposed to other uh, herbal uh, plants also so Absolutely. can you explain you know, it's the a process? very very yeah, very no. relevant yeah yeah it's a very very relevant question you have in fact touched the crux for it uh, mm-hmm. sorry sorry arjun no i think someone else's uh, mic is on uh, ah, okay so, sorry oh, sorry arjun sorry sorry let me yeah yeah no is is that okay but the can aparna yeah. here now Yes, yeah, yeah, sir, I, I can hear. I've just okay, muted great. myself. Okay, great. Ah, that's that's great. Okay, now basically, Aparna, that was a fantastic question because so why is it very very relevant? I'll tell you the first the relevance part of that uh, in a very simple way. Now imagine that um, uh, you know we know we we know the basic uh, food ingredients like carbohydrate, uh, protein, fat. Of course, there are other minerals and everything, right? Now, if you eat only protein, uh, you know a lot of people advocate protein only diet for certain conditions. or maybe that they will ask you to avoid carbohydrate for certain conditions or maybe fat for certain condition or eat fat for certain condition uh, so this is kind of a diet prescribed you you must have heard about it right yes sir yeah now this is one method now this can be equated or you know this can be understood very similar to modern medicine because you are you are addressing a specific condition with a limited uh, approach uh, duration it's like an army action remember i told you in the starting that there is something called as an army action the army has a specific objective you go and do the objective you sanitize and you come back 
you don't have anything else you are not a long term personality there you cannot go and build a nation there your aim is to terminate eliminate and come back okay whereas in ayurveda if you look at the same thing a a a medicine is prepared like a meal now in a meal when you eat uh, depending on from which place you are okay you will have certain carbohydrates you know the rice or wheat or something then you will have dal with that you may have some sabji with that you may use some pickles and everything so you see it's a complete meal you cannot differentiate in these things so when you take something as a complete meal it actually gives a totally different benefit for i give you an example if you take you are taking only rice your blood sugar will shoot up because uh, you know that's what the sugar does sugar will get immediately released into the blood and the blood sugar will shoot up but why do we eat dal with uh, carbohydrate because the protein has got the quality to hold back uh, this uh, rice from being immediately digested and absorbed or it has other of course glucagon kind of uh, hormones also come into play but primarily fiber protein and everything helps to uh you know slow down the process of abs- uh, digestion or absorption so that in a very systematic and stabilized manner the glucose will be released in the blood so that you don't get into a kind of a panic or emergency condition okay things go in a much east manner in a east manner similarly if you look at all the traditional ayurvedic medicines you never ever ever get a single drug in ayurveda except in certain emergencies only in certain emergency conditions they used to prescribe single drug preparations we call it as in kerala we call it as ottamooli ottamooli means single drug preparations which were used for certain specific emergency related conditions only otherwise all these are mixes of so many so many different uh, you know herbs or their plants and their uh, specific roots or leaves or anything now what happens is that when you mix up all these things you are processing it and then when you process it you see there are certain bad effects uh, of certain plants will get compensated by some other good effects of the other plant so that's how you make the mix for example in a family okay when you when you are cooking food in a family of course you cannot cook for uh, you know different people different things so what you do you make slight changes here and there so that it suits everybody same principle is used in a single uh, you know formula ayurvedic drugs are formulas so it has different ingredients which will compensate suppose if something is heating in nature you cannot only have heat as a treatment modality so what they do whatever is heating they will put something cooling also into that so that the heat will not dominate or it will get self limited so this is how most of the ayurvedic formulations were done so sarpagantha was never used as a single drug in any time in ayurveda because there was no such usage in ayurveda okay what he meant was that sarvagandha was used along with many other ingredients which actually enhances the quality of sarvagandha for a particular effect and these other ingredients which actually suppresses the possible side effects and in addition this is called as prabhava it's for example you know you, you you know there are certain let's say for example um, let's say you mix two things okay you get a third effect which is not necessarily belonging to the first two so that that's called, that kind of an effect is called as prabhava okay so that is that is what is being used in ayurveda now in olden days you ask another question interesting how people developed all this how they thought about all this currently we have something called as probability science right you do research and then uh, you run it through probability now probability science is being modified again with artificial intelligence now it is uh, the same thing people used before called as meditation okay meditation is nothing but artificial intelligence but done in a simple uh, manner or in a, in a single manner or a personalized plan so in meditation they could see visualize everything just like you know nowadays you know you have this artificial intelligence reading your x rays you don't need a doctor anymore in in future in fact most of these images would read by artificial intelligence you don't need a doctor so what it does is that it just looks at it it has enough data it will match with the data it can tell you everything of the picture what is being shown similarly in meditation when they sit you know you, you don't need to actually see the stuff they could know everything from the plant but just by looking at the plant it's very simple you know aparna if you, if you look at a person you know if you if you if you you know kind of uh, interact with a person for some time a lot of his qualities you will start understanding right have you noticed this yes sir hmm. so it is just imagine the same quality of yours heightened to n degree 
that's what that's what happens to meditation so you will know about the entire qualities of the plant or the drug and then automatically you will know what will happen when you mix up few things and that's how they formulated a lot on top of this of course they actually conducted uh, what do you call uh, research by uh, you know doing it on uh, you know other patients and a few a lot of uh, i mean a fundamental research what we follow has similar roots in ayurveda they were actually done in ayurveda very specifically i know from my grandfather who used to do the same thing who was a uh, 100 years back i'm talking of course i have not seen it personally but uh, we know from all the textbooks and all that what he has written all the his handwritten manuscripts and everything and from what people say because he i remember for my fa- uh, father's um, you know elder sister she had a rheumatic fever you know that's kind of a heart problem also can happen in that so he was making different different types of medication because in those days there was nothing available uh, for those kind of diseases in those years so he uh, made some medicines it did not work on her then he changed it so so she survived without any problem till her uh, almost till 80s only with ayurveda so that was the research what he was doing i'm just taking one anecdotal example i'm not this may not be the example but just to understand how how things are done in those days but somewhere it was lost in between that was the problem but it's I hope it's coming back so this is one of the difference between um, uh, you know the approach of modern medicine and why modern medicine finds uh, you know side effects in fact it is being misused that's why side effects are affecting us modern medicine is supposed to be used as an emergency for an emergency you have to use it like a commando action don't use the commandos and army for your civilian issue on a day to day basis then we will fall sick but people you see people want easy solution they want uh, everything to be done quite fast and quick so it is easy to pop up a pill and forget about it at least they think that so we fall in for the uh we have to pay pay the price price for that and that's a side effect i hope i'm able to address i mean address what you wanted actually all right yes sir thank you so much i mean uh, it is gives us a better understanding because the same thing was raised when uh, do, uh we we brought out a covid uh, diet and uh, you know mm-hmm. there um, uh, we we recommended horse gram uh, soup and people started mm-hmm. asking can we take horse gram in a pill form so then you know the doctor mm. said no horse gram <laughs> soup is you know it works with other ingredients like right. pepper or something else so people want everything right. in a pill unfortunately in isolation i think uh well you see yeah. people want everything in a pill form that's the reason why your body yeah. in the future what will happen actually is that your body will get redundant your body will become, become absolutely useless you will not have any use of the body you will have use of only the mind and mind related problems are going to be the most in demand thing from childhood to you know last age group mind related stuff because people do not know what to do with the mind and especially with uh, the current style of schooling and everything what is happening you will never use your body you will never move the body so in a way what actually will happen in the future society is that human beings will become much more uh, more closer to animals like cattle Uh, so mm-hmm. the body is being used for commercial purposes only to just to produce energy as such the body will not be able to do anything in food and everything what we see will be gone there will not be anything kitchens are getting closed everywhere mm-hmm. so imagine when kitchens are getting closed naturally the internal kitchen also will go useless that is your intestines and digestive system will go useless so once the digestive system is useless it doesn't matter what you put into it so you will have to deal with the mind what going to happen of course not with our generation but the coming generation is going to deal directly with the mind nothing with the body body will be just an additional stuff what we have to carry around so everything will be mental it's all going to be mind mind related uh, greatness mind related problems everything so art will be a huge hit in the future so that's Thank how you. the world is going to go ahead yeah. you are welcome uh, up any other question okay uh, my name is deepak and uh, i am just looking at your opinion because now you just heard sure. uh, the issue because you also have there are multiple disciplines basically trying to address the same issue uh, of human well being human health and human happiness uh, to see approaches right. let's talk about health as we speak now uh, there yunani there is mm-hmm. homeopathy there is an ayurveda and nature care and 
and each one have some claims and that they have achieved something you know big some people have benefited so you think because as a user as a human being i only mm-hmm. want the uh, irrespective of what daven pleasure and what approaches and most of these approaches to my understanding are also using the basic tenets are same the basic approach is also same ingredients also being no put somebody is using extracts from the even and you know the huge amount of extracts are used uh, even mm. allo- uh, in uh, allopathy itself they mm. could be from animal or humans what i mean for uh, the plants itself right, so you right, think that's, that's you true. you think that it a, with a present advancement of communication which i think is the first time humans are reaching there mm-hmm. is an approach for an integrated uh, understanding <laughs> a comprehensive understanding which addresses mm-hmm. a human issue then then addressing or you know working on an individual discipline per se uh could you sir please uh, uh, i mean you know clear it little more when you say individual discipline See, you mean of the system uh no as an individual if suppose my i mean let let's take an example somebody's hmm. knees are paining yeah okay so just because of the practice or something a person goes to uh, an allopathic doctor and he talks about knee replacement right or whatever yeah 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 ha, ha. now there is a somebody who goes to a unani and he says no no there somebody says i have taken a unani medicine it's worked very well ha other one comes out is no in ayurveda there is a much better treatment so sure, as sure, a sure. user <laughs> as a, a human being i what i care is that okay the knees should be working very well and i should be able to walk for say 15 kilometers or what is expected out of me without any problem right you got it mm. so i don't care it is coming from ayurveda unani or yeah yes, as i understand okay great yeah as of okay. now the approach generally you find is that people are specialized people are trained in a particular discipline so they only mm. promote their discipline because their information is limited to their discipline absolutely absolutely and i, I thought just to connect it very clearly is basically when you go for a heart somebody will do a you know a surgery for a bypass or somebody mm-hmm. will try and put in uh, stents it depends mm-hmm. on what does the doctor specializes in where you are born <laughs> very true very true, right. very, true mm-hmm. very true yeah 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 okay great great okay, okay. i understand okay okay sir now uh, see it's a very very interesting question now there is one two parts into this one thing is um, something called as the routine health care okay being healthy how does a common man remain healthy now traditionally what was happening was that we never had to think about it because our food our um, you know lifestyle everything was running as per the nature to a very good extent there may be some exceptions here and there but to a very good extent we in india see there was no there was nothing called as nutrition as such in ayurveda if you see they don't mention great things about nutrition because it was something a science which was a part of the culture at home our mothers or you know grandmothers at that time they knew what uh, you know nutrition was and that's why i said in between the talk somewhere i think i had mentioned that kitchen kitchen was actually like a surgical unit it was considered to be so important it's like a factory or it's like a you know surgical place or it's like uh, things like that where fire was used and then it was taken care from utmost care and the mother used to know okay what is the problem this guy is or what is the you know that the girl's problem accordingly she could cook certain specific food in certain specific manner so that it it becomes very healing and uh, healthy so we never had to think about how to maintain health now that has slowly degraded and has gone out of our system so now we are in a condition whether we are not able to understand what is health even okay so even for a small change we started running into uh, others to get some quick relief so that you know uh, i don't want to think about it but i think to a good extent we have to change that we need to think there is nobody else who is going to think now why your question is relevant because people are asking others to think you know for example now i have a knee problem let's imagine that i have a knee problem so i go to a person and telling him that okay i have a knee problem give me something that means i am asking him to think for me first thing is that i have to think what it is if i have to study on that i have to study on that because it's my body it's it's my thing it's like you see uh, people going in for certain adventure sports or in army actions uh, there are a lot of things which they have to depend on themselves 
to a big and to a huge extent, irrespective of whatever it be. It may not be their profession to understand all that, but no other go. So similarly, in our life, there are certain fundamentals which was inculcated into us through culture, like food, nutrition, how to take care, how to wake up, what time to wake up, what are the social activities, how to sit, how not to sit, why you should sit on the floor and eat food, why not on the chair, who can sit on the chair and eat food, a number of things were there, but we lost all that. So we lost the knowledge or why we are doing all that. So because of that, now we are running uh, you know, from post to post, finding out, uh, you know, asking people, how should I leave or how should I leave? Now that has to come back. Now, the only way to come back is that we have to take responsibility. So when I have a knee pain, for example, now I need to understand just because that guy is telling me that I have to go for a knee replacement uh, surgery. I'll tell you my own cousin's example. Uh, she is around, uh, must be what, 55 or something. Of course, she's a little bit on the obese side and everything. So the, the orthopedician, as soon as seeing the uh, x-rays, both the knees, he said, uh, he said there is no other go other than going for a, a knee replacement. I also saw that, of course, it's true. One knee joint is almost completely in, in a very bad shape. Um, but the other one is manageable. This one also is manageable for a few more years. Now, uh, then we, of course, we asked a lot of people because we knew a lot of uh, experienced people. And they said, see, consider your age. She's only 50, 55. This knee replacement, once it is done, uh, you know, its maximum life is for 10 years. Maximum, what they speak, is 15 years. Once it is completed, its lifespan, shelf life, it's gone. Nothing can be done. Nobody can do anything on the knee joint. So these are the things which needs to be considered. I'm not against uh, modern medicine. The same thing happens with, um, you know, Ayurveda and all that. People simply say that, okay, I can treat you, uh, you know, from a root cause point of view and all that. Don't fall for all those things also because end of the day, it is not about eating some pills and making you all right. The first responsibility is to understand for us what is our knee pain, why is it happening, and fundamentally what your body can do, what your mind can do, we should do it first. And then look at the conditions. Maybe ask many, of course, it is, it is confusing. I know if you go to a uh, modern medicine doctor, he can never tell you anything about Ayurveda. Ayurveda cannot tell you anything about another uh, system, maybe. So it can confuse us to a certain extent, I agree. But then, even with all these confusions, you still have options to wait and then think and review. And then question, question everything. Don't, just because they are saying, you don't have to follow it. It's not necessary. So you have to question it, why you are taking and you have to question yourself also. Both the sides you have to question. So when you do this, both the side questioning, what you are actually doing is cognition and recognition. And this recognition will tell you what to do, how to do. Most of the time, it will end up as a combination. You will, uh, you know, if there is an emergency thing, you may have to go in for whatever emergency care is required at that time. Additionally, you may have to have a good diet, you may have to follow good exercise, you may have to follow a good uh, you know, sleeping pattern, stress management patterns or X, Y, Z. These things have to be in a combination. Uh, as I told you, emergency management is not in combination. It's a single objective base, like an army action. You go, finish off and come back. Don't look at anything else. There may be collateral damage. There will be there. But that is not a consideration when it is an army action. That's how modern medicine works, which is very good to a certain extent in certain conditions. But the other one is, uh, you know, like a policeman's action. It may take time. It may have its own problems here and there. But that's how the civilian problems are. We have a constitution. We have a judiciary. Whether it is good or bad, any country, you have to follow that. So sometimes things can go wrong in that, uh, you know, system, constitutional system. But then uh, that's how, uh, you know, the entire design is. So we have to have a judicial mix of all these things. We can't just, um, you know, because we do not know, we cannot ask the army to come and rule the country, the civilian issue. Similarly, the civilian cannot go and instruct an army person how to you know, shoot. So I, I think this is how you need to address because there cannot be any single integration of all these things. That will not happen. Integration is going to happen as uh, artificial intelligence will take over. Now, AI is actually doing a lot of data processing, so it is not having enough data to tell you. But otherwise, in the future, I'm sure that uh, AI will take over. All these confus confusions will go away. AI will decide. Human beings will not need to decide. Anyway, human being doesn't have the capacity to decide anymore. We have lost the capacity to decide because we cannot imagine. So AI will do that. Just like already, you know, most of the conditions AI is doing uh, diagnosis, a lot of diagnosis being done by AI, a lot of image reading related to your uh, CT scans and all these things are being read 
much better way than a doctor by the artificial intelligence. Uh, a lot of surgeries are happening with the help right now. But as we program, I'm sure AI will take care. So that would be the future path. I hope uh, I have somewhat touched at least some fundamentals for you, sir. Yeah, thanks. Uh, but I think we, we still have lots on the uh, plate. Sure, 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 sir. Um, thank you all for joining in. I think it was an abrupt end, but uh, I hope you all enjoyed the session and we're going to have similar sessions coming soon in the future. Hope to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful session. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.